Hello, everybody. Let's go over the lab on Faraday's law. <clears throat> um, Faraday's law is one of my favorites <laughs> for this whole course um, because it connects everything you've learned about electricity and magnetism. And Faraday's law is really, really important for our everyday lives. We depend on it every day. And the world is the way it is because of Faraday's law and the technology that we have um, is due to Faraday's law. So let's just kind of go over briefly what Faraday's law is. Um, so <clears throat> you already learned that electric fields and electricity and current is created by charge, right? Um, if I have a charged particle, it has, a, has an electric field around it. Um, and if those charges are moving, there's a current there. Um, but there is another way to generate an electric field and there is another way to generate current and that is by changing the magnetic field in a given area and by changing the magnetic field over time you know, in a given area that causes or generates an electric field it generates an electric field and because there's an electric field it generates a voltage and if you put a, a charged particle there it will move and there will be a current there as well so faraday's loss basically it tells me that a changing magnetic field with respect to time generates an electric field. And it generates a voltage and it can potentially generate a current if you put a, uh, you know, a, a circular wire there. Okay. And so the way this is written using mathematics is And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it not have that. And I'm just going to make it look like this because <laughs> we don't need to worry about derivatives in this class. This is Faraday's law mathematically. And this little E is called EMF, electromagnetic uh, force, which is basically a voltage. So this is telling me that there's a voltage generated due to a changing magnetic field with respect to time. Now this symbol stands for magnetic flux and it's basically how much magnetic field passes through a given area. And all that is, is magnetic field B multiplied by A. <clears throat> so how much magnetic field is passing through a particular area? And if that changes with respect to time, a voltage will be generated and, a, and an electric field will be generated. And if I put a loop of wire there, a current will be generated. Um, so a simplest scenario, I have a loop of wire, right? And I, and I have a magnet nearby, North Pole, South Pole. Its magnet has a magnetic field around it, right? And so if I move this magnet around this loop of conducting wire, what's ultimately happening is as I move this magnet, 
the magnetic flux through this particular area, right? I mean, it's changing everywhere around the magnet, right? But if I'm just looking at this little loop of wire, right? The magnetic flux is changing through this loop of conducting wire, right? There's, I can bring it closer. There will be more magnetic field lines going through this loop and that will increase the magnetic flux. If I pull it away, it will decrease the amount of magnetic field lines going through that area. It will decrease the flux. In either case, the changing magnetic flux with respect to time would generate a voltage in this wire and a current in this wire. Now, the, the negative sign here is there because um, <clears throat> it, it tells me about the direction of the current and the voltage that is generated. I don't want you to stress out too much about the direction right now. I really want you to just focus on the fact that changing the magnetic flux or the field with respect to time generates a current and a voltage in this wire. And notice there's no battery here, right? There, there's no battery generating this current. It's simply moving a magnet <laughs> inside of this um, loop of wire changing the magnetic flux with respect to time will generate a current here. It's amazing, right? It, it's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and so therefore, if you know, I had a, if I had a light bulb connected right here, and I moved this magnet around this loop of wire, the, the light bulb would light up. It's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> that is how the power plants create our electricity, right? It's so important. Basically, there are there are turbines spinning, right? And maybe the magnets are spinning, maybe the coils are spinning. I don't know and I don't really care. It doesn't matter. The concept is there's some mechanical thing spinning these uh, magnets or these coils, right? whether it's wind energy, solar energy, whether it is uh, water energy, whether it is um, fossil fuels burning and creating steam and spinning these things, right? Whatever it is, there's some mechanical thing that is spinning that is changing the magnetic flux through these loops with respect to time, and that causes a current to flow in them. It's wild, right? It's pretty cool. Um, now, if I just hold the magnet stationary, and I don't move it, the light bulb won't light up, right? Because I have to have a magnetic flux that changes over time, right? So if it's stationary and not changing, nothing's going to happen, right? I have to have some motion, right, of this thing. So that can be, there has to have some mechanical input to spin this thing, right? To spin it or whatever, to change the amount of magnetic field lines that pass through this loop and generate a current. And not to get too ahead of ourselves, but ultimately, this is why, uh, this is how electric fields and magnetic fields are related to each other. And this is how we get electromagnetic waves, which are basically just light waves, right? In the sun, <laughs> I've got these, you know, electrons bouncing back and forth, right? They're creating this electric field that, you know, kind of oscillates like this, right? And because these uh, electrons are moving back and forth and each of them uh, have their own little, you know, uh, <clears throat> magnetic flux, basically, right? As this propagates, that's the electric field, the magnetic field is generated in the other direction. So if you kind of think about this as a 3D thing, it's hard to draw it. <laughs> But it's a three dimensional electromagnetic wave. And basically, changing magnetic field, right, creates an electric field, and vice versa. Changing electric field creates the magnetic field. And it's a self propagating electromagnetic wave that travels through space. 
anyways, I got a little ahead of myself, but I think it's, I think it's really cool. In this lab, you're going to focus on <laughs> um, how changing the magnetic flux with respect to time generates a voltage. And you're gonna look at lots of different applications. Okay, so let me bring up the um, the lab first has you learn a little bit about magnets, like what is a bar magnet, what does it look like, what does the magnetic field look like around a bar magnet, and then you're going to go through and <clears throat> play with electromagnets pickup coils, transformers, and generators. Okay. And all of this is conceptual in nature. Okay, so no graphs are required here. You're just gonna look more at conceptually what happens. Okay. So I'm gonna bring up the uh, lab. and we'll just walk through it together. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I just like to make a video for each lab so you kind of have an idea what to do. Um, when you click on start, there's a couple of different options. You don't have to download it. Just click on this run compatible version. Okay, so in the first part, um, it's just simply helping you learn about magnets, right? Bar magnets. A every magnet has a North Pole and a South Pole, okay? And I'm sure that you've learned before that if you cut a magnet in half, you can never separate the North Pole and the South Pole. They always come in pairs. So if you cut the magnet in half, you will still have a two magnets with a North Pole and a South Pole. <laughs> And you can keep cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting until you get to the smallest particle, um, <clears throat> which is an electron, right? And even a single electron has a North Pole and a South Pole. Um, <clears throat> because it's, it's a charged particle that is moving and spinning <laughs> in simple terms. So, um, <clears throat> Because it's a charged particle that is moving, it's generating its own tiny little magnetic field that has a North Pole and a South Pole to it. So that's why you can never separate the North Pole and the South Pole. They always come in pairs. And if you look at, at the magnet, if you look at the magnetic field around this magnet, <clears throat> um, you will see that kind of curves, right? It looks a little bit different than an electric field. If I had a p positively charged particle, the electric field for that would just emanate straight out, radially outward, right? But uh, the magnetic field, since magnets always come with a North Pole and a South Pole, the magnetic field looks a little different. It radiates out from the South, comes back into the North. <clears throat> and if you look inside the magnet, you will see that there's a magnetic field inside the magnet too. And so magnetic fields actually are closed loops. They loop around. If I, if I plotted the magnetic field for this thing, it's, it's looping, right? It has no start or end. Right? It doesn't start on the south. It doesn't start on North Pole and end on South Pole or vice versa, right? It, it is a continuous thing, okay? So magnets and magnetic fields always have a North Pole and a South Pole. And because of that, they always form closed loops of magnetic field. And so as I move the magnet, the compass around, the North Pole of this compass is always going to point to the South Pole of the magnet, regardless. And um, it's going to line up with the magnetic field at that point in space. So this magnet is lining up with this. So the magnetic field here kind of points up, right? The magnetic field here points this way. The magnetic field here is pointing directly to the south pole, right? 
So you can see it's kind of loops, loops around. If I put it in, oh, I can't put it in. Um, but that's that's the idea. Um, and when you use a compass on Earth, the north pole of the compass is always pointing to the magnetic south pole which happens to line up with the North Pole. So it, the, 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 the geographic North Pole. So it's a little confusing. <laughs> the geographic North Pole is actually the magnetic South Pole. And when we use a compass, our com the North Pole of our compass is pointing to the, ge uh, to the magnetic South Pole, which, are, which is actually at the North Pole. <laughs> it's confusing, but um, that's the idea. Now, the other parts of the lab, you could just click on these tabs to look at, um, go through the other parts of the lab. So the next one is called the pickup coil. And <clears throat> this is showing you exactly what I was talking about. Here are two, loop, uh, a couple of loops of um, conducting wire connected to a light bulb. Notice there's no battery here, right? So the question is, how can I get this light bulb to light up? As we said, there will be a voltage generated in these loops and a current generated in these loops by changing the magnetic field through the loops with respect to time. So there's lots of different ways I could do that. And your goal is to test out and see which way is going to get the most out of this light bulb. So if I move it up and down like this, notice it doesn't really do anything, right? Because the amount of magnetic field that is passing through the loop isn't really changing that much with respect to time. So it's not really generating anything. But maybe I do this, right? It starts to light it up, right? Because the amount of magnetic field that is passing through this loop is, is changing now with respect to time. What if I do this? Whoa, okay, so now I'm really doing something, right? The North Pole is coming in, that's changing the magnetic field, and then the South Pole is passing through as well. That's also changing the magnetic field a lot through the loop. So that really generates a lot of current and um, voltage in this circuit. And that really lights up the light bulb. Notice that as I oscillate this thing back and forth, the current is continually changing directions. And that's exactly what happens at the power plant too. The current is continually changing direction because they're like spinning this magnet, right? And as it spins, right, it's going to continually oscillate the current back and forth. And that's called alternating current. That's what comes into our homes is alternating or AC. Now you can also mess around with some of the other parameters here and see if you can get it to light up even more. So I'll leave that to you. The electromagnet is interesting because this is showing that um, moving charges create magnetic fields. So in a bar magnet, it doesn't look like there's any moving charges, right? So how is there a magnetic field generated? Well, magnets are very special, uh, permanent magnets are very special because they have a lot of special properties that allow them to become magnet, magnetic. Most materials cannot become magnetic, um, but things like iron, nickel, manganese, other magnetic materials have a special property where if you've taken chemistry, you might have learned about this. They have um, a set of electrons in their sh in their shell. I'm trying to explain this right, but they have electrons in their shell that are unpaired. And because they are unpaired, um, they their magnetic fields don't cancel out. What happens is that their unpaired electrons magnetic fields line up. And all those tiny little um, magnetic fields of all those unpaired electrons can add up to an overall macroscopic effect. 
And <clears throat> if the whole object becomes magnetized, so like if this little electron right here becomes mag uh, uh, is the magnetic field is pointing this way, and then the one next to it, its magnetic field points this way, and then the one next to it, its magnetic field points that way, and they all point in the same direction, then you can get an overall magnetic field in a bar magnet. Most materials don't have that property. Most materials have electrons in their shells that are paired up with each other. So the magnet, the magnetic field of one of the electrons might be pointing up, and the other one might be pointing down. So they cancel out. Um, but special uh, materials that can become magnetic have the property where they can get an overall magnet, magnetic field in them. But if you don't have a bar magnet, that's okay. You can use an electromagnetic. A moving charge or currents generate magnetic fields. And those are shown here using the compass. <clears throat> the more loops you add, the greater the magnetic field. The more current you have, the greater the magnetic field. The next tab is a transformer. So basically, when you look outside on the telephone, on the um, power line poles and stuff, you'll see transformers. It looks like a little trash can on top of the thing. What's in there is a transformer. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It transforms. <laughs> it takes voltage from the high voltage power lines and transforms it down into lower voltage so that it can go into our home safely. Um, and so because it's alternating current in the power lines, um, those transformers can ultimately like if this is high voltage right and these are you know depending on the number of loops the area of the loops you can increase the voltage or you can decrease the voltage okay and so when it leaves the power company you have um transformers that increase the voltage and then you have transformers that step down the voltage that come into our homes. The last one is a generator. So your goal here is to, so a generator is, is something that takes mechanical energy and converts it into electrical energy. It generates electricity. And so your goal here in the last part of the lab is to set up this situation to get the maximum amount of electric energy out of this. So you turn on the water, the water spins the magnet. You can change the number of loops, you can change the loop area, you can change the strength of the magnet. Your goal is to get the maximum amount of electricity out of this light bulb and tell the story. What is actually happening? The water turns on, there's mechanical energy, spinning this why is electricity coming out <laughs> conceptually can you tell me the story right the magnet is turning the magnetic flux through this loop is changing with respect to time it's generating a voltage and a current in these loops and it's generating electricity in the form of light and heat right and you should be able to um, play around with the parameters to get the maximum amount of electricity out of this so that's the goal of this lab, to solidify your understanding of Faraday's law. Um, again, I think it's one of the neatest things about physics. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, please set up a Zoom meeting with me or email me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.